Hold on. If you ever doubt that prayer doesn't work, this is an example of prayer. Um, I pray for my children all the time that they would come to church. And uh, I still have two, well, have one in prison, but two that, you know, don't come. But I'm still praying, and I hope one day that they'll show up. But uh, I praise God for, for this one. <laughs> I'm a soldier bound for glory. I'm a soldier going home. Come and hear me tell my story. All who love the Savior come. I will tell you what induced me in this glorious fight to start. Was the Savior's loving kindness overcame and won my heart. Many say that I'm too noisy, but I'll tell you the reason why. If they only felt the glory, they would shout as well as I. To death's dark swelling river Like a warrior I shall come Then I mean to shout salvation And go singing glory home I'm a soldier bound for glory I'm a soldier going home Come and hear me Tell my story, all who love the Savior come. I love Jesus, hallelujah. I love Jesus, yes I do. I love Jesus, he's my Savior. Jesus smiles and loves me too. I'm a soldier bound for glory. I'm a soldier going home. Come and hear me tell my story. All who love the Savior come. And one of my favorite songs, and I thank the Lord for it. All right, take your Bibles this morning and be found in the book of John, the Gospel according to John. In chapter number 3, the gospel according to John. In chapter number 3, give you the thought the Lord has laid upon my heart. John chapter number 3, when you find your place, if you're willing and able, I want to ask you to stand and we'll honor the reading of the Word of God today. John chapter number 3, very uh, familiar, uh, if not the most familiar chapter in all of the Word of God. And uh, we thank uh, the Lord for it. John chapter number 3. In verse number 1, John chapter number 3 and verse number 1 this morning. John chapter number 3 and verse number 1. If you're there and you're with me this morning and you love your Bible, would you let it know by saying amen? amen? The Bible says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher Come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. 
Notice what the Lord says in verse number 7. We'll stop our reading here. Jesus says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege that it is to be in thy house with these people. And Lord, I, I thank you for the good singing we've heard. Thank you for the good Sunday school hour. And God, uh, the truth that, uh, that's already been proclaimed. And I, I do pray, uh, Lord, that you would continue to move throughout this place. And I pray as we come to the preaching time, God, may you do what only thou can do. We recognize and understand that uh, unless you do the preaching, there'll be no preaching, Lord. We understand that it is not in the power or the ability of man, and uh, but at God, it's only uh, by my spirit, saith the Lord. And so we ask you, Lord, may you breathe on us one more time, Lord. I pray you'd prick hearts in the building. I pray, God, you would draw sinners to yourself. God, may you open blinded eyes. And I, say, I pray that the truth of the word of of God, it would go for and lives would be changed as a result of it. Lord, we love you. Give me an unction to preach with, a fresh touch and a fresh anointing. Take this unworthy vessel, use it for thy glory and will not fail to give you all the praise, glory and the honor for it all for it's in Jesus high and holy name we do humbly pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for standing. You can be seated this morning. Here in John chapter number th uh, 3, uh, we are introduced to a man by the name of Nicodemus. Nicodemus, the Bible says, was a Pharisee. Now, if you're a Bible student and you study your Bible, you know and understand uh, that a Pharisee was one of the most religious people in all of the world. We find this crowd, they followed the Lord wherever he went. This was a crowd who, uh, they were very strict in keeping the Old Testament law. Uh, this was a crowd who, uh, they didn't miss church, amen. Uh, they, 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 they tithed, they, uh, they fasted. I'm talking about they, uh, uh, they observed the Sabbath. They did all of these things. They believed uh, in the circumcision on the eighth day. I mean, they were as religious as a person uh, could be. There was nobody more religious than the Pharisees in Jesus' day. And the Bible says that this is a part, this is the crowd of whom Nicodemus was a part of. He was a, a religious man. Not only was he a Pharisee, but we see here in the text that he was also a ruler of the Jews. Many, uh, many uh, all agree, Bible scholars agree and suggest that he would be a part in that of the Sanhedrin. If you know anything about the Sanhedrin, you know and understand that that was the council in that day uh, to where when there was an issue, when there was a question uh, concerning uh, uh, the law and, and such that they would bring it before the Sanhedrin and so uh, the Sanhedrin would then address it. And so uh, this is a man who he is a religious man uh, but he is also a man man who had a position of authority. Uh, make no mistake about it, this man named Nicodemus here in the text was a man who was looked up to in the area in his town. He was looked up to among uh, the community. This was a man who had some influence. He was respected among others. This was not the town drunk. Amen. This was not the local drug dealer. This is not a G Jesus having a conversation uh, with the prostitute down here on the street corner, uh, but rather this is a man who was respected among men and he was respected among uh, the community. I see his status, who he was. I see uh, Nicodemus's need, yet the Bible says that he came to Jesus by night. Uh, this, this man of, uh, of religion, this man of influence, however, he he comes to Jesus by night. You know what that tells me this morning? That tells me that although he was a religious man, although he was a man of influence in his day, he was also a man who had a need. This was a man who had a need. He had a concern. Uh, this was somebody who was searching for answers. He was looking for something. He was looking for truth. He was needing some help. And the Bible says, so he came uh, to 
Jesus. I notice that it says that he came by night. Many have suggested that the reason that he came by night, uh, this gives indication that he was uh, trying to be discreet about uh, coming to the Lord and recognizing that he uh, that he had a need. I mean, you think about it, this was a man who had some influence in that day. This was a man a part of the Sanhedrin uh, council of that day. And the fact that he has a need spiritually uh, might not uh, be something that he was wanting to be broadcasted. I don't know if that's the case or not this morning. Uh, I can see how that is applied uh, because I know how it is when people uh, have issues and when people have problems and when people uh, have needs in their life uh, they don't want it broadcasted. I understand that uh, but how many would agree that we've become a people who is more dedicated to having the right kind of image among other people rather than just dealing with the truth at hand. Somebody ought to say amen right there. I I mean we're more interested in making sure that everybody else thinks that everything's good on the inside whether it is or whether it's not. Uh, By the way can I tell you this morning, you know what helped you a sight in the world? Uh, You know what helped me and help our church more uh, than anything uh, this morning? Uh, It would help us if we'd start focusing more uh, on what the Lord knows about about us rather than what everybody else thinks about us. Somebody ought to say amen right there. You know I'm telling it right. If we get more focused on what the Lord knows about us rather than what other people think. And so they say he came to Jesus by night because he was being discreet. I don't know if that's the case or not, but nonetheless it's not so important as to when he came by night or by day. What's most important is that he knows does come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Could I tell you this morning, it matters not whether you, what day it is or where you're at in life. You say, well, it's been too long. I've gotten too old or whatever the case may be. No, friend, there's not a bad time to come unto the Lord. He's God in the day just like he's God of the night. Somebody ought to help me right there. Amen. There ain't a bad time to come to the Lord. There ain't a bad time to get, to get help for your soul. Uh, there ain't a bad time to get some truth. Amen. Uh, to, uh, to find what you're looking for. He comes to the Lord and the Bible says that he comes by night. You say, how do you know he came because he had a concern? It don't say that he has a concern. Uh, he never says anything to that nature. The fact that he comes to the Lord and the fact that he is there gives evidence that there's something going on in this man's life. And not only that uh, it's what the Lord says unto him that, that, that seals it and gives the truth as to where he was at uh, can, uh, spiritually and to what his need was. Notice what the Lord says in verse number three. Uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. He, notice this. I'm not saying it to the man down the road. I'm not saying it to the one uh, that you've been running with this week, but I'm talking to you, Nicodemus. I'm saying saying unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God. Here's what I like about what Jesus does in verse number 3. Jesus as Nicodemus approaches him, as Nicodemus comes before him, Jesus don't waste any time in the matter. Jesus don't tiptoe around the issue. Jesus don't prolong the issue any longer but rather he jumps right into it right to the heart of the matter and he deals with the man's need without the man even bringing his need up before God. I don't know if it, good God Almighty, I don't know if it does anything for anybody else in here this morning, but aren't you glad we've got a God who knows your need whether you recognize it or not. You may have walked up in here this morning on the outside everything looks good. Uh, To the church you look all right that everything's fine, Uh, but on the inside if truth be told, you're on 
an emotional roller coaster. Uh, you've got things all out of whack. You don't know whether you're going or coming up or down. I mean, it's a it's a total train wreck at the inner part of your being where you stand spiritually this morning. And whether you recognize it or not, it's not by chance you are here. You're here because there is a good God in heaven and he knows where you're at and he knows your need this morning and he's not just a God who knows your need but he's also a God who can meet your need. He can supply your need. Amen. He can do for you what you can't do for yourself. He comes before the Lord. He has a need. Jesus brings uh, uh, attention uh, to this need. And and I want to say that all men have a need that only the Lord can meet. Man's greatest need is the need of salvation. Amen. I don't care what your social status is. I don't care how religious you are this morning. I don't care what kind of title you carry with your name. I don't care where you've been, what you've done, how much money you've got in your bank account. The fact of the matter is all men are sinners in need of a Savior. There is a need that only the Lord can supply in your life. A man's greatest need is you need to be saved. You must be born again because Jesus Jesus makes it very clear there's not one way for one and then another way for another. There's only one way. There's only one exception and that is you must be born again this morning. Jesus makes it very clear that in order for a man to see the kingdom of God, he must be born again. By the way, that word except, it carries the idea of something happening in order for something to take place. Except a man be born again. It's the same as, we've got the lights on in here this morning. It's the same that except you flip that switch over there, the lights ain't going to come on. Amen. You can come in here and clap all you want to, but these ain't going to come on when you clap. These lights work off of a switch. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you got to, hey, hey, y'all, there's some of you men, you know, sometimes you got to switch them two or three times before they get to come on. But except you flip the switch, the lights ain't coming on. Right. It's the idea here in the text. Jesus says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I see Nicodemus' status. I see, his, I see his need. But here's what I want you to see this morning. I see Nicodemus' beliefs in verse number two. Watch this now. Nicodemus comes to the Lord. He's a religious man. He's a man of influence. He has a need, but notice his beliefs this morning. Notice what Jesus, or what Nicodemus says unto Jesus. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. You know what I see about this man named Nicodemus here in the text? Not only was he a religious man, not only was he somebody in the the community, not only was he a man who had a need, but he was also a man who believed in Jesus. He believed in him. He said, said, "We, we, we know that thou, this ain't something we're wondering about, we know that thou are a teacher. He he believes that Jesus did the miracles. He's not questioning whether or not Jesus did. He's not questioning whether it was the uh, the Lord Jesus who healed the blinded eyes, who caused the deaf ears to hear, uh, who made the lame to walk again. He's not not questioning uh, what took place there uh, at that wedding in Canaan. He's not questioning these things. He, he, He believes that. He says that he is a rabbi. He calls him a teacher. He understands that he's one that came from God. He believes every bit of that, yet he's still a man who's lost in his sin and on his way to hell. By the way, can I say this this morning? There is a difference in believing something in your head versus believing something in your heart. Amen. There's a difference in believing in your head and believing in your heart because when a person believes in their heart, it'll change everything about them. It, it'll change. It'll change every every inch uh, about you. It'll change the way you think. It'll change the way you live. It'll change the things you do. There, uh, it will change who you are. 
There's many today who believe in their heads the truth about Jesus. The reality is they're not going to heaven. Because except a man be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The problem today is not that people don't believe in God. Now I know it'd get quiet right here, but now hang with me. The problem is not that people don't believe in God, that they don't believe in Jesus Christ, but they don't believe in their hearts to the point to where they're willing to surrender all unto him and make him Lord of their life. That's why, that's why you've got people when the camera is on them, they're quick to mention the name of God. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It's been bothering me for a while. I'm a college football fan. I ain't got no lies to tell. There ain't nothing wrong with a little college football, but eh, when it becomes your God, then there's something wrong with it. But I grew up in a time, you know, prime time. We seen the big deal yesterday. You know, they had the big win at Colorado, and that's wonderful and everything. But you see the interview after the game? And it's, thank you, Lord, and giving, you know, uh, uh, recognition to God. And, and, only, and that's wonderful and good and everything. But if you'll watch, if you'll follow him long enough and you follow that crowd long enough, it ain't going to be too long. They'll be out there on the camera giving God praise and then they'll go to the locker room and they're cussing and acting a fool. Amen. Uh, Talking about how, you know, oh, bless the name of the Lord. But then all of a sudden they get around when the camera ain't on them and all the time acting like a fool. Amen. It's preaching time. You say, you ought not do that and you ought not call it out. I'm just telling it like it is, friend. There is a crowd out there. They're quick to identify with God when the camera's on them but behind closed doors or where nobody else knows who they really are that's when the truth comes out they've got a head knowledge but not a heart knowledge somebody say amen sure there's a crowd out there who will just openly and blatantly say we just don't believe in God but if truth be mad, truth be told even among that crowd they know better than what they're saying the Bible says that you can walk outside and look up at the stars tonight and you've got something within you that brings recognition and understanding that there's somebody greater and bigger than you out there, amen. They say God behind it all, he created it all, he keeps it all together, amen, holds it all in the palm of his hands and we understand that and most of that crowd who just want to say well I just don't believe in God, you know what they do, they really believe in God but they don't want nothing to do with God and so they come out with this idea well I'll just choose not to believe in God, you choose choose not to believe, you can choose to believe. It don't matter what you believe. It still don't change the fact that God is who he says he is, always has been, and he always will be. A Jesus Christ is not just a man. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a teacher. He's not just some, uh, some individual who everybody looked up to. Oh, no, 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 friend. He was God in the flesh, Emmanuel. He was virgin born. He was the sinless, spotless lamb of almighty God. Amen. I'm talking about he was unlike anything this world has ever seen and he was unlike anything this world will ever see. There ain't nobody like him, friend. He's a one of a kind. He came, he lived, he bled, he died. He's the savior of the world. He's the Messiah. He's the soon coming king. He's king of kings and he's lord of lords. You say, I don't agree. It don't matter if you agree or if you don't agree. I'm not in the business of trying to make you mad this morning. I am in the business of trying to make him glad and he called me to tell you the truth and the truth is except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God this man had some beliefs but he still didn't have it Jesus made it very clear you must be born again can I say this to you this morning there ought to be a lot more preaching God help me as your pastor I feel convicted this week that I ain't done no more preaching on being born again than what I have. I got to thinking, God got a hold of me this week, and I was just, I was going back, and, and I know we've quoted this text, I know we know this text, but I went back, and I don't think I've ever preached a message on being born again since I've been your pastor. God help me. Amen. Because if ever there was a message and ever there was a time that, that the message of uh, being the truth about being born again needs to be preached, there ought to be more preaching on being born again today. 
Hey, it's enough of this all, all this other kind of preaching going on. Hey, listen, there's plenty of preaching getting up talking about how you can live a happy life. How you, amen. How you can, uh, there's prosperity gospel, name it and claim it. Hey, it's enough preaching going on uh, talking about, uh, you know, how to, how to treat your neighbor. Amen. How to treat your church. How to be good. And I believe in every bit of that. We need that kind of preacher. Amen. I mean, doing all this kind. How to, how to, how, how to give to the poor and all the do's and don'ts of Christianity. Christianity, and that's wonderful and good and we need that but all of those things hear me now you can do all of those things you can be the nicest person that's ever walked in shoe leather you can be a, a more faithful than any church member ever has been to your church I mean you can be the best son you can be the best daughter you can be the best father the best mother you can do all of those things you can give to the poor you can give to the needy I mean you can be a good Samaritan you can be a good individual worker a job, pay your bills, I do all of those things. You can be a good person, but that still ain't going to get the job done. I don't care. I will take it, but you can give every dollar you want to to the church. That don't mean you're going to go to heaven when you die. Somebody say amen right there. Just because you got baptized, just because your name's on the church roll, just because you're wearing a suit and tie and carrying a King James Bible, that ain't going to get you to heaven, friend. You must be born again. I say again, you must be born again his beliefs he believed some things right but he still didn't have the one thing that he needed that was a second birth let me give you another I've got to hurry I see his beliefs I want you to notice this question verse number 4 I like this Jesus answered and said unto him Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, watch this, how? He says, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Question mark. How can this be? How? Watch this. Nicodemus asked the question, of how. How does this happen? How does this work? Except a man be born again. Okay, I hear you about being born again. But here's this question. How? I like it when somebody asks the question, how? Huh? Here's why. You say, why do you do that? Here's why. Because when somebody's asking the question of how, that means they are interested and doing what's talking about being done. See, if he didn't want to get born again, he would have never asked how. And that's a major, that's, right here's a major difference we have in America today in 2023. In, in, in evangelism today versus here with Nicodemus in John chapter number three because the question of today is not how, but the question of today is why. Huh? That's why we got all these apologetic classes going on and things. You know, we're trying to defend the faith and I'm not against all that. You need to know why you believe what you believe and all that stuff. But I'm telling you, friend, how more people are interested in why versus how. I remember when I was lost and undone without God. I remember what it was like. I mean, I'm talking about when God began to deal with my heart. I remember what it's like going to the house of God uh, during that meeting. And I mean, a man of God got up and he reared back, preached to me how uh, full of the Holy Ghost and just reared back and told me the truth. How except a man be born again, you cannot see the kingdom. Of I remember that. He preached the gospel unto me. I remember I was lost. I remember what it was like when the Spirit of God had convicted in my heart and I knowed something was wrong there was a concern within me there was a need that I was needing met and you know what my response was I didn't ask why but I asked how Lord <laughs> how do I get saved how do I get rid of all this rottenness and filthiness and how that's dragging me down I'm not asking why but I'm asking how Get this now, you will never get to the how until you first get past the why. 
A person that's all time asking why is a person that ain't there yet. It's a person that don't understand. It's a person that don't know and don't realize the condition that they are in. But somebody who is asking how is somebody that realizes their true condition, that they're lost and undone without God, that he is who he says he is. This book ain't just some book, but it is the truth of the word of God. And the response will be how. Now we know according to verse number four, I've got to hurry, that Nicodemus, he's still thinking earthly, right? Because he's talking about, you know, how can this be? How can I be born again when a man's old? How can that happen? He's still thinking earthly. Jesus begins to inform him, listen, you're not there. You don't understand. I'm not talking about an earthly birth. I'm talking about a heavenly birth. I'm talking about not a natural birth. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. Verse number five, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now this water, and there's been a lot of misconception and really there's been a lot of false doctrine come out of verse number five here. The water that Jesus is referring to is not water baptism. Amen. I'm going to say it again. It is not water baptism. The water in verse number five that Jesus is referring to, he's talking about the physical birth. Now, we all got enough sense in here. We've been around the block long enough. We all pretty much on the same page. We understand that when a woman gives birth, her water breaks. He's talking about a physical birth, not that you've got to be baptized to be born again. You, hey, we can dunk you 157 times. You still die lost and go to hell. It ain't about water baptism. I believe that, that you ought to follow the Lord in water baptism, but that ain't what saves you. It's a natural birth, but Jesus is talking about a spiritual birth. Being born again is a new life. He's talking about a new life. It's, hey, well, listen to me. When a person is born again, when there's a spiritual birth, it is not the improvement of an old life. It is not the remodeling of an old life. It's not somebody turning over a new leaf. It's not somebody developing new habits. It's not somebody getting a list of new goals and, you know, different things. No, 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 no. When a person gets born again, it is a total separate, new, distinct creature and individual. Amen. The book of Ephesians calls it the new man. It ain't the old man updated. No, it is a totally brand new man. This book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, amen, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, old things become new. It's a new birth. But how, Nicodemus says, how is this possible? And from verse number 10 to verse number 21, Jesus deals with the how. I don't have time to give all of it to you, but I am going to read some of it. We got time, praise God. It's only one Sunday every week, praise God. Verse number 14, notice what Jesus says. Nicodemus is asking how. Jesus says in verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the, through, that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for everyone notice he's talking about a difference now for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light neither cometh to the light lest the deeds should be reproved but he that doeth the truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God 
Jesus makes very clear how all of this is possible and it ain't got nothing to do with Nicodemus but it's got everything to do with the one who's talking to Nicodemus. He says, has Moses lifted up that serpent? Notice, Nicodemus understood the law. He was religious. He understood what had took place and you Old Testament Bible readers know over there in the wilderness when he picked up the, the, the rod, you know, all them that got snake bit when they looked, they were healed. You know that story? And that was a picture of what was to come, how that Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, he would be lifted up before the whole world to see as he became the ultimate sacrifice and because of the sacrifice of God Almighty that it is possible a man can be born again. In other words, here's the short version. You don't have to die and go to hell. You can be saved. You don't have to leave the same way you came today. You can have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can be born again. You can be redeemed. Amen. And you too can come in here and understand what the rest of us are shouting about. Jesus says, I'll tell you how. Me. That's how you get born again. I'll leave you with this and I'm done. From the text, we learn that there is only one exception when it comes to eternal life. And that is a man must be born again. There's not a, you can't get around it. You cannot bypass it. Jesus does not say, except you think about being born again. He doesn't say, except you want to be born again. He says, except ye must be born again. So here's the question this morning. Where do you stand before the Lord? Are you saved? Are you born again? Has this spiritual birth taken place in your life? I'm not asking you this morning, do you go to church? I know who's faithful to our church and who ain't. Amen. I'm not asking you, do you, do you, do, 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 do you go to church? I'm not asking you, have you been baptized? I'm not asking you, do you pay your tithes? I'm not asking you all of these other things. I'm asking this morning, the one thing that is most important, the only thing that is important, have you been born again? I like what he says in verse number, verse number seven. Jesus says, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. You know what that word marvel there means? It means don't wonder about. Don't be so shocked. Don't be so surprised that I say this. Can I say this to you? I know what it's like to get up here and get to preaching the word of God. And all of a sudden you get them looks. Amen. You're laughing, but I know, I know, I know some of you. Some of you got that smile on your face right there. You're like, uh-oh, you caught. Yeah, I catch on to it every now and then. I've seen, I've seen where people get up and they make it look, and they'll be like, I, good Lord, I can't believe he said that. Well, is, is he talking about me? You know what you're doing? You're marveling at what was just said. You're stunned. You're shocked. You're surprised. However you want to say it, you're marveling. And the world, America this morning, a man of God gets up and preaches a message like, we, like, like, like I just preached and what you just heard this morning, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And you know what most of America will do? Oh, I can't believe he would say something like that. You know what Jesus is saying? Marvel not that I said it. Don't be surprised because I'm telling you the truth. And the truth is, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I don't care how good you are. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care what any of those other things. You throw all that stuff out the window. You must be born again. Just this week, just this week, I know of people who've stepped off into eternity. Just this week, I know of individuals. I'm talking about I'm, not, I'm talking about men who you wouldn't have ever you, people that you wouldn't even ever thought of. How many woke up this week? who sat where you sat today. They were sitting there last week thinking everything's going good, life's good, everything's good, and all of a sudden, just this week, little did they know they was going to experience their last sunrise. 
They was going to sit around the table one last time with their family. They never dreamed this was the week that time was going to be up on this side. And they stepped off into eternity. And right now, they're spending eternity somewhere. They're either in heaven or they're in with the place where the Bible calls hell this morning. Amen. There's one or two. And you going somewhere. Whether you like it or you say, well, I ain't going nowhere. Oh, yeah, you are. Well, I don't believe that. It don't matter if you believe it or not, friend. You're going. And the only way you're going to heaven is except a man be born again. And so before we leave this week, guess what we're going to do? You're going to get confronted with the real issue. And you can marvel, but Jesus says you ought not marvel because the truth is, except a man be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You must, you must, you must be born again. Let's stand our feet this morning. Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. You must be born again. I don't know who you are. I don't know. I'm looking at the outside this morning. If I'm being honest before you, I look across our crowd today and most of you look like you got everything together. Everything's good. I know most of you in here and you look good this morning. I thank God for it. But the truth of the matter is, I cannot see where it really matters. I can't see in your soul. I can't see in your heart this morning. But there is a God in heaven who can. And he sent me this way to tell you, you must be born again. So preacher, I'm a, I, 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 I'm a good person. Praise the Lord. We like good people. And we thank God that you're a good person. But that ain't going to get you to heaven. You must you must be born again. And so right now, while we're having a moment of invitation, I want you to get real honest with the Lord. And I want you to think within yourself, has there ever been a time that I know without a shadow of a doubt I went from death unto life? I don't know all the details. I can't tell you much about it, but I do know this. I know without a shadow of a doubt if I died right now, heaven's going to be my home because I know I know the Lord saved me. I called upon his name. I realized I was a sinner. I realized my need for a savior. And I realized there was just by what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary, that was the only way I was going to make it. And I got before the Lord and I asked God to save me. And I got born again. I got born again. If that's never happened in your life, I wouldn't leave. I wouldn't leave without knowing, without a shadow of a doubt, where I was going to spend eternity. I know it's getting late this morning. We're not going to be here much longer. I know you got dinner waiting on you, all that. But listen, listen to me. I wouldn't miss heaven for any amount of fried chicken. Banana pudding, as much as I love it, I wouldn't miss heaven for it. And if you're here and you've never been born again, you ought to get it. You ought to get saved before it's everlasting too late. I'm going to pray with you. We're going to sing a verse of invitation. If God spoke to your heart, why don't you come? So I don't want people, well, I wonder what people's going to think about me. Why don't, you get, why don't you quit worrying about what other people think about you and focus on what the Lord knows about you this morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And by the way, if they think something bad about you anyways, they need to, instead of, instead of sitting back there and pointing their finger thinking, they need to get on the altar beside you. Somebody help me right there. Yeah. Amen. Ye must be born again. Father, Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for salvation today. Lord, I pray for that one that's among us that he is not saved. I pray today be the day that come get saved for it's everlasting too late. May a new birth take place. Life everlasting happen. We love you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name I do pray.